Hey everyone, welcome back to Sense. I'm Ben as always. So we're kind of nearly at spring, right? So I thought today we take a look at one of my favorite lines from one of my favorite designer houses and it's the Hermes Chardin line. <laughs> So the Hermes Jardin line, it's kind of old now, I guess. Like the first fragrance came out in like 2003. The last one came out last year, so it's kind of not so old. Um, but for the most part, they're, they're, they're kind of knocking on now. You know, let's say like the earliest one came out 2003 and they kind of came out every two or three years from there. So the first five were all made by Jean-Claude Elena and uh, Jardin. Uh, De Monsieur Lee was I think one of his last fragrances for Hermes and then um, Christine Nagel took over and she made and Chardin Cellar Lagoon. Um, I'm going to sort of walk through them all a little bit today and just kind of introduce them I guess so I'll put timestamps in the in the description if you want to jump to like the specific one. If you're here just for Jardin Cellar Neil I'm going to say check out some of the others because um, basically Jardin Cellar Neil gets all the talk really I, I, I never really was sure why I think it's probably because the notes are quite unique for it um, but some of the others are just as good as Jardin Solanil so I say like if you are here check yeah go ahead smack one of the the timestamp for Jardin Solanil give it a watch but when you're done like flick around and, and check out some of the others because because I think say there, there's there's some real gems in this collection so yeah Let's get started because we've got six perfumes to go through. I'm gonna, they're, they're, they're not, these are not gonna be like full on reviews. I'm just gonna give you my kind of introduction to, to each one. You know, we'll start at the beginning and go from there. So the first one is Un Jardin and Mediterranean, which is fantastic French. And it was based on a, a Tunisian garden, apparently. Um, and it came out in 2003. So all of these are based on gardens from somewhere around the world. Uh, and, and say this one is a Tunisian garden. The notes on the top are mandarin, bergamot, lemon. In the middle, orange, blossom, white, nerium. And in the base, cypress, fig, musk, cedar, juniper, and pistachio. So this one's actually quite nice, I quite like it. Um, some of these I actually don't like that much, um, but I'll, I'll tell you which ones they are. Um, but this one I like, uh, so we'll give it a spray. I ran out of test strips, so I've got two of these, which are coffee filters that I used to fill with perfume ingredients. Um, so yeah, that's why that's a bit droopy. Works just the same. This one's got a really nice opening and it's, it's got a quite, I, th I think it's the the pistachio in the opening is really interesting. It has this, like, if you smell bois farine, um, you, and you're, you're familiar with that, that was also made by Jean-Claude Elena, and that, that's different because it's much more nutty, uh, and bois farine is a peanut. But, but in this, it's like, you can smell that nuttiness in the opening. It's got a slight nuttiness. It's also got a lot of citrus. And the other big thing for me in this, it has a sort of mentholated note in there. Um, I, I don't know what it would be because if you look, I, I suppose cypress maybe. Um, but if, say, if you look at the actual note list and there's nothing on it that's particularly mentholated. There, so there is the cypress um, that I suppose might have that kind of element. But it's but it's really nice. Otherwise, um, if, if you're not familiar with Jean Claude um or if you are familiar with Jean Claude, he, he does a lot of. This collection is really quintessential of like it, it it's the the very kind of essence of that wishy watercolor style that he's got. Um, this is he's really sort of perfected that with this collection, I think. And 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 so what you get is this kind of. Vaguely watery, nutty, mentholated, creamy, sort of fresh, gr gr grassy smell. And um, all of these have a bit of a kind of water vibe to it. I would call them aquatics in a way, but they're not standard like usual aquatics, not at all. But yeah, it's a really interesting one. This one, it's it's not particularly usual. I I, I do think it's that 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 cypress. I don't get like a huge amount of fig, to be honest. The fig for me is, 
so it's not that big coconutty fig that you sometimes get. The, the fig in this, for me, is much more green. It's more like a, the fig tree or the fig leaf. Like it, it's not so much like figures in the fruit. It, it, it's much more green and, and somehow kind of fresh and, and sort of fleshy than that, uh, I guess. Um, but it, but it's nice, um, and, and I think actually that that works because say fig is not everyone's cup of tea, right? But it, this is not a big fig, but it but it has that sort of slight. It's very subtle, um, very kind of uh, effervescent fig sort of note that's sort of wrapped in a kind of watery green, slightly mentholated, sort of grassy, sort of slightly nutty, slightly woody smell. Um, it's really good. It's really really good. So that's the first one. I should probably move on because I don't want to spend too long on these because um, otherwise you'll be here forever. So the next one is obviously the really famous one, um, a Jardin Selenil. It came out in 2008. Uh, so it's a, a, a garden on the Nile. And yeah, it's supposedly like a, a garden on the Nile, um, surprisingly. Uh, it's This one's a little different. Um, Say so they all have a lot of things in common, like that slightly watery aquatic feel, um, and they 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 all have that kind of very wishy washy John Claude Elena um, watercolor kind of vibe to them. Uh, this one is slightly more interesting in the start. The notes for it are carrot, tomato, grapefruit, and mango in the top, and then you have orange. Peony, bulrush, hyacinth, lotus in the middle, and labdamum, musk, iris, cinnamon, and incense in the base. Now, some of that stuff I don't get. I don't get any incense. It's not a very, like, because you get that labdamum and incense. You see that there and you think, cool, is that heavy fragrance? No, these are all really light spring, sort of fresh cut grass fragrances. Um, and, and I don't get a lot of the labdamum or the incense. I, I, we're actually saying that. You do get a bit of the labdamum, but it's not like a thick, dense, leathery kind of labdamum at all. It, it's more just sits under there and kind of gives it something a bit, a bit of a backbone, a bit something a bit thick to kind of sit on. But it's still, I say thick, it's still like, you know, floaty and, and dreamery and, and, and quite sort of fragile smelling. Um, the, 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 I'll be honest, the carrot and the tomato, I don't really smell. For me, I, I feel like they perhaps just lend it like a, a slight kind of watery vibe, um, and, and perhaps that's it. And I and I can smell that, but I don't really get a unique kind of carrot and tomato smell at all. Um, the grapefruit and the mango are what's really big in this, the mango especially, and the mango lasts for the whole fragrance. Um, in fact, it just sort of gets bigger and bigger in it for quite a while. Then you've got next, you've got like the orange, the peony, bulrush, hyacinth, lotus. That that's all really apparent in the fragrance. And for me, that's the the kind of heart of the fragrance is that mango, the lotus, and the peony. They're like the really big kind of notes in this for me. That 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 will last you the whole fragrance. It's quite feminine, and it's quite. Um, fragile and glassy and light. I, I, I reviewed all of this. I, I, I actually did like a proper review of this one on my channel, I think. So if you want to check that out, there is. I'll, I'll stick a thing up there. Um, but it's it's really good. This one is is probably one of the more unique of the Jardin line. But it's it's really really good. The notes to say are quite interesting. Um, but it's but to me it's I, I don't feel like it's it's really like kind of so you read those notes but it's it's not sort of really out there and weird it's still completely wearable and 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 safe as ours is so the next one that came out moving on because say we got I don't want to sort of take all your day but uh, in Jardin après le mousson so this is a garden after a monsoon and it's supposedly from India. So it's like uh, if you, it, I think it's if there'd been like a drought in India, and then like a big rain, uh, this was the kind of smells after that rain. And this one again is is, is really interesting. Uh, it came out in two thousand and eight, um, and I think this one, along with Jardin Selenil, are probably my favourites. So the opening, well, the notes in this rather are coriander, ginger, pepper cardamom, 
uh, water notes, floral notes, citruses, and vetiver. And you get all of that. That that's almost like a perfect description. So the ginger is is like fresh ginger. It's really good, and it's quite unique. It, it's like it so it's not. It doesn't smell like the kind of spice rack ginger. It definitely smells like um, like root ginger, like that you're cutting up. You know, it smells definitely like that. And then you get all that kind of watery notes and the the the, the pepper and the cardamom for me are, are the big ones. So you get that pepper, coriander. They're not massive. They just kind of spice it up a little bit. The cardamom, quite big. So for me, it's like ginger, cardamom would, would be the two big ones in this fragrance. Um, and after that, you've got that kind of like spices from the coriander and the pepper. And then I would say you've got the watery notes and the floral notes um, and, and the citruses and the vetiver. It's really good. I this, say this is probably my favorite along with Jardin Selenil and it's definitely the most interesting of the Jardin line. It's definitely the most out there of the Jardin line. Say so none of them are, are super out there, but but this one is the most if you're going to kind of if you're interested in those kind of out there fragrances. Speaking about them being not out there, the one thing I will say about them is they are quite unique. Like for kind of springtime aquatic -y, grassy smells, they're all really unique. Um which is what I like about this collection is it's not, none of them are cookie car. None of them feel like standard fragrances. They all smell, they've all got, they've got a really strong character. This whole line has got really strong character. But yeah, it's really good. Say the ginger is, is wonderful and, and, it, and it is the, one of the main notes in this. Say the ginger and the cardamom for me. And, and what I like about this one is it's ginger, cardamom, coriander, pepper. That suddenly, you know, if you stop right there and say, what am I describing? Most people are going to think kind of a heavy oriental, but it's not. Because then it's got those kind of grassy, watery notes that all the others have got as well. Like that kind of DNA of the Jardin line that make it a, a really fresh spring aquatic kind of vibe. But it's not the usual notes you would obviously make an aquatic from and and i say that's the sort of thing that i really like about this fragrance i really like the way it's 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 quite subversive in a way um so next up we've got a jardin sur la toile so this one is a garden on the roof and it's supposed to be based after um the roof garden that's on top of the ms headquarters in paris now I'm a bit split on this one because it's in the middle of Paris. So I would have really liked to see some dirt in this fragrance. Like, you know, some kind of like some tarmac, some maybe some like kind of petrol fumes, that sort of thing. I, I appreciate that wouldn't have been everyone's cup of tea, but I think that would have been really good. But they haven't gone that route. So the route they have gone with it is, is still really good and I really like it. It's... Um, it's this one to me is very close to a Jardin Selenil actually, uh, and I feel like having both of them make, makes them is a little bit unnecessary. The, but the the, the 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 opening is very different. So the notes in this one, this one came out in two thousand eleven, and the notes are grass, red apple, pear, rose, magnolia, rosemary. Bang, there's your lot. Um, now. It opens, say, so very, very different to a Jardin Cell of Neil, but the dry downs are quite similar-ish in a way. So this opens with apple and rose, and, and to me, that's what I get. I get a very delicate, sweet Turkish rose, and it's really nice. It, it's really soft. It's not a, 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 a kind of horrible harsh kind of rose it's definitely like soft pink rose or, or, or I, I mean i don't know if it would be pink but that's what i get in my mind is like a soft pink rose um and then you've got that red apple which is really good it f smells bang up like photorealistic fresh juicy apple and then grass which is say honestly the grass notes in all of these in this one it's actually you know written down 
but it, it's in all of these and the, the watery notes there as well. And otherwise, that's about all I get to say that the pear, yeah, okay, so I get pear, but the pear is not as strong as the apple. So for me, the apple dominates that pear a little bit. The pear just sweetens it up underneath. You've got that red apple that's really kind of crisp and, and clean. Um, and, and the rose, uh, magnolia and rosemary, I don't get a lot of that, to be honest. Um, I, for me, mostly, there is a slight kind of green herbalness to this one, and I suppose that's the rosemary. But I wouldn't say it's as photorealistic as like the apple and the rose and such. It's, it's kind of more subdued than that. But I can smell it. It's there. Yeah, there, it does have like a kind of... I almost feel, almost feel it's like basil rather than rosemary, though. I feel like almost like a basil, like a green basil in there as well, or, or, or you know, maybe I'm getting confused, but but it's nice, it's really good. I say, I would like to have seen them go a different route with this and, and chuck in some kind of petrol fumes and sort of like concrete and stuff like that, but it's, you know, it's still nice. So I believe they, it's, it's, it's kind of supposedly sort of after a rain on the, on the roof in Paris. Um, and it, and it, it, I, I, I can see that. I think all of these are quite evocative. And say, um, you can kind of tell by their backstories, but they, they are quite evocative fragrances as well. And I think when you read those backstories and you smell them at the same time, you you kind of feel like, yeah, they're, they're transportative. You know, they, they kind of make you feel like, yeah, I, I can see that. I can, I can picture what the perfume is trying to get at. Um, but it's really good, it's really good. Um, uh, so for me, it's, it's very close to Anjala and Solanil, this one. And, and I feel like you don't necessarily need both of them. I would say Anjala and Solanil is more, um, it, it, it's more of a citrus with that, and, and the, a kind of big mango. Uh, but, but, but they're very close. They're, 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 they're still really like, the heart is still a, a kind of, juicy fruit and a floral because it, it, where in Jean Solanil you have like the lotus and the mango here you've got the red apple and the pink rose um that's you know it's, it's horses for courses right it, it, it's they're different and they don't really smell the same but they're essentially they're playing the same roles so that they, 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 they there's a bit of crossover there Jean de Solanil is probably the most feminine of the lot I would say um well apart from sort of lagoon but we'll get to that one um but it's really good it's really nice um things are going to start going slightly downhill now because we've got a jardin de monsieur lee which is a chinese garden it came out in 2015 and the notes are, are really basic it's just kumquat mint and jasmine uh, and that's that's it um and it's I'm actually wearing this today, so I don't really need to spray it. But at least I've got the dry down here, right? Um, it's, um, I like this. I like the opening of this. It's nice. Um, it, it, it's very different to the others that went before it. It's still got the watery vibe, but it's nowhere near as strong. It's not, it's not as prominent. The, 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 the jasmine and the mint are really, really done well. The mint is subtle really really subtle it's almost like a, a subtle spearmint in there um and obviously with it again it's got those same green notes so it does feel like a kind of fresh sort of spearmint kind of feel um but it's really really subtle um and then next to that you've got a jasmine which is one of the softest creamiest jasmines i think i've ever smelled this is not like a big overpowering white floral it's not like a big white waxy floral not at all this is a really transparent washy jasmine and it's really really subtle and it has like this kind of creaminess to it uh, and it's really nice and then the kumquat which is which is it's kind of the main focus of the fragrance in a way um and, and it's really nice it's say it, it just smells like a kind of juicy quite ripe fruit um quite young Sort of tender kumquat I guess it's 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 it, I mean it really I mean you can say that note listing say kumquat jasmine and, and 
and it's what it is. I mean, it, it is basic um, and transparent and linear, and that that's what it is. It's, it's say you can add that it has a sort of watery green grassy note to it, but otherwise that's about it. Say that the the interesting part is the jasmine that's very creamy and very soft, and the mint is very very subtle it has a slight cannabis vibe actually it smells a bit like weed um like fresh weed but i mean we're talking like super subtle in here it's like very 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 deep in the fragrance and it's really really subtle um but otherwise i really like it, it it's weird that it's like a chinese garden i don't really feel like there's anything kind of like chinesey about it but um but that's okay, you know, it's probably the least evocative and transportative of all of them for me and because it, I think it, because it's so sheer, because it is really sheer, it doesn't really sort of inspire me at all. Um, it's probably my second to least favourite of this line. I, I will sort of go through them at the end and tell you what I think is best and worst and everything, but, but it's not that it's a bad fragrance, but it's just that it's it, it, it's not as transportative as the others. I love that creamy jasmine though. It's really, really good. So the last one, and this one, say, came out in 2019. It wasn't by Jean-Claude Elena. It was by Christine Nagel, or Nagel, or Nagel, I don't know. I, sorry, I don't know how to say your name. And this one, for me, is a little bit of a departure. Um, and I also don't think it's very good. I think it's okay, but it doesn't blow me away in the in the least um but I, I'll, I'll put you through it so then it's supposedly so in uh, jardin sur la lagoon is a garden not in the lagoon or on the lagoon um and it's a venice a, a walled off venice garden apparently um from some i think fictional british history character or something maybe um i i'm not sure but um so the notes are Magnolia Lily, uh, Pittosporum, or Pittosporum, I'm not sure what that is, uh, sea notes and woody notes. Now, where I think this one trips up is it instantly having like sea notes, uh, it's it different to all of the others, which I guess in a way is, is good. You know, like, but none of the others are aquatic in that way. All the others are aquatic in a really interesting way um, because they're they're sort of going more with that dewy rainwater sort of aquatic vibe. Whereas this one's going with a bit more traditional kind of like sea. Um, and but but the main issue I have with this is that is the florals. The white florals in it are, for my money, like just a little bit. Um, old-fashioned and old ladyish, and I, I guess that's the magnolia, magnolia and lily. I mean, that's just asking for it, really. But the problem is, is there's nothing in it that really kind of spices it up and makes it more modern either. So it, it just feels like a slightly old-fashioned white floral with. A kind of vague C note over the top of it, and the woody notes. I mean, even there, I, I don't feel like there's a lot of wood in this fragrance. To be honest, there's a sort of creaminess in there that I suppose is coming from the florals. But otherwise, I feel like it's kind of old-fashioned and a bit too like traditional rest home. Um, smells a bit like pensioners, um, and 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 I, I just. Don't think it's that good um, of a fragrance. I, I read a really interesting review on this, and it really sums it up perfectly. I think, um, and it was on Fragrantica, and it was just a user review. Um, but they said um, this, this doesn't feel like a MS fragrance, and I have to say I agree. That that really for me was the perfect summary of this fragrance. That it, it just doesn't feel like an MS fragrance. If you're into MS, like as Fragrance House or Jean-Claude Elena, the work he did there, I think you probably know what I'm saying already. If you're not too much into Hermes, like like I really like 
I say as a design house, they're my favourite design house. They're, if you're not too much into Hermes, y you might not really know what I'm saying. So to explain, like Hermes fragrances for me have got something quite special about them. And one of the reasons they're one of my favourite designer houses is that they have this absolute effortless class about them. And they don't ever feel showy or flashy or... I feel like a lot of them are not even like these kind of particularly interesting scents. But when you wear them, you realise that there's like a really satisfying class going on. And then and it, they feel like... It's very chic, like and and like I say, like an effortless, like cool class, um, and and that's not a projection on the brand because I know that the brand is expensive or whatever. That is for my money, like what the fragrances bring. I, I think they have a really strong character, and I think all of this line, despite some of them being quite out there, even like uh, Un Jardin Après la Mousson with its ginger and all the rest of it. Once that kind of starts coming down, you get this kind of Hermes effortless class that feels classy and sophisticated. Um, and this one doesn't. It doesn't have any of that. Um, I feel like it, it's lacking in all of those departments, really. Uh, and when it dries down, it doesn't really get any better. Um, so I have to say, this for me is my worst of the Jardin line. I do know that some people like it, so maybe it's just not my thing. Like I say, for me, those white florals, they're not my thing. They're, 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 they're slightly headache inducing, feel a bit old lady-ish, a bit pensioner, um, and it just doesn't sit well with me. But maybe that's just not my thing. But, but what I will stand behind, whether it's my thing or not, because this is a lot more objective, is that it just doesn't smell like an MS fragrance, I don't think. It, it, it really smells not cheap at all, but it doesn't have the effortless cool that the other MS fragrances have. It doesn't have that effortless class. Um, and, I, and I think that is really notable um, in, in, in the greater picture of it. So, yeah, that's, that's that one. Not not that great, really. Bit of a come down. So in terms of orders that I think are good, so so these are like the order that they came out. I don't think it's you have to change it so much. For my money, I think Un Jardin Selenil and Un Jardin Après la Mousson. They're the top tier for me. They're the two that I think are, are like the best. They're the, they're also the most interesting. Um, I would put. And Jardin uh, on a Mediterranean uh, or Mediterranean, whatever it is, I would put that closely behind. I feel like it's not quite up there, but I would put it closely behind. I think these three are all fairly top tier. I say I would put definitely like SS rank, and this one at kind of like S rank. You know, it's just slightly behind. Um, but th these three, I think, are all really good. And then I think kind of slightly behind again, you have uh, a Jardin sur la Trois, which I think is really good. Um, and I still really like it. Um, but I would put it just slightly behind. So let's kind of like line these bad boys up. I would put these two like here and then just slightly behind, I would have that one. And then just slightly behind that one, we have a Jardin sur la Trois, right? And then for my money, a Jardin uh, de Monsieur Lee is nice, but I would say it's a step down, like for sure. This one comes a little bit more way back, right? It's, it's a bit more of a gap. Uh, you know, if we're talking like S, SS, S, A rank, Monsieur Lee is, is kind of like C plus B rank. You know, it's, it is good and I do like it. But when you compare it to the rest of the collection, it's it's a bit of a shadow. And then a Jardin sur la Lagoon, I mean, that's like, you know, thanks for trying, but no. It's, uh, for my money, that's just, you know, it's, it's fallen off the, the music stand. It's that, it's that bad. Uh, it's just it's just not that good. I just don't like it. Um, 
So I appreciate maybe that's not everyone um, that thinks that, but but for my money, it's it's not as good anywhere near. Um, but yeah, overall, the collection is incredible, and I really like it. So I've just made a massive long video about it. Is if in springtime, I think it's it's one of the best kind of collections that you can kind of investigate. If you want to wear that kind of light, transparent designer perfume, um, I do think it's like, if you like Jean-Claude Elena's wishy-washy watercolour kind of style that he has at times, this is all about that. All about that. that it's like, this is his kind of swan song for that kind of style, um, I, I think. Um, and it's really good. If you're into like aquatics, uh, I, I definitely think it's interesting. And if you're not into aquatics, I think it brings something that is different to a lot of other aquatics that, that might interest you. So I would still say give it uh, give it a try. And say so, the older ones for my money are the better ones. Um, but you know who knows? Uh, we've all got different tastes, right? So that's uh, the Jardin collection from MS really really great spring collection so thanks very much for watching if you want to see a longer review about any of these just let me know and i'll i say a longer review this is like going to be a pretty long video already but you know like we are focusing on just one fragrance do let me know in the comments and, and I'll, I'll do a review of it and um, say the jardin on the i've done a review of that one but i i i'm happy to review any of these others even Solenial. um so yeah, do let me know in the comments and um, let me know your favourites in the comments if you've tried them um, uh, or, or you know, let me know which ones you're most interested in. Thanks very much for watching. Uh, stay healthy, I guess, at the moment, right? With all that coronavirus jazz. So yeah, stay healthy. Um, thanks very much for watching. Cheers.